Welcome back to the forever purgatory that is May 14th, 2021. It's never ending. If you're unsure of what I'm referring to, I plan on covering every single liminal space image that is posted on this text channel, which resides on my Discord server. So far, I've made three separate videos venturing my way down over 7,000 image submissions. In the last and most recent video, we took a quick detour going over images that you all sent in from a request I made a little while back. So even with all these videos, I've yet to even make it past day one. But eventually, right? Everyone up to speed? Perfect. Then let's hop right back into it, starting off with some more of Phil Snare's photography. With this first image, we're presented with an actual subject, in this case being this red brick pillar, which, compared to everything else, stands out vibrantly. I also want to mention the state of this building and how clearly in transition it is, with wires hanging from the ceiling, ripped paint pieces, unkept floor tiles, and general nothingness exaggerated by the repetition of the metal structure poles. The lighting in this image is abnormal as well, with the lights appearing as on. However, no actual light is being casted, apart from the bright foreground, from Phil Snare's flash. Here we have a continuation of the last image, as it's clearly located in the same setting. Comparing this image to the last, I'm left wondering once again whether or not this image serves a purpose. It's the exact same as the other one, only slightly blurrier and without the red pillar. Because of this, the image to me kind of feels plain. This is a bit of a biased take, however, as I did look at and go over what I consider to be the objectively better image first, so I'll leave it to you. Which image do you think works better as a liminal space? The first one, containing a clear subject, or the second one, having a lack of a subject? Let me know below. This image appears to be taken through some type of screen or screen door, as seen by the faint checkered patterns that appear in the brighter areas of the photo. Submitted by TP, we are shown an outdoor environment with a pile of rocks. I'll make an argument for the video's sake and call this a liminal space due to there being transitional elements. I have to exclude all forms of nature, but I'll mention that this tree is clearly planted by some type of landscaping, so it technically could constitute as design. These rocks could have once been a solid structure, now demolished as a pile of rocks, so in a transitionatory state. What becomes of these rocks is not our concern. From my understanding, this image is actually Ralph's 4D cinema image fully complete. I gotta say, it looks a lot better. I can imagine the fear of being trapped in a room like this, especially having the ability to see through this tinted window into the other room. I would question the design choices of putting two rooms adjacent like this, and that door would endlessly taunt me with the idea of escape. More than anything, I'd be fearful as to why I was alone. After all, there are two rooms, unless perhaps, I wasn't alone. So this image is actually concept art from the video game Portal 2. It displays a rather dilapidated aperture science testing chamber, with some kind of mechanical monstrosity popping out of the wall. Because a majority of the image is taken up by the rubble and the walls, the space appears cramped. It's an extremely desolate environment, and one that I would even consider to be scary. Can you imagine yourself in these ruins, having this thing with you? I mean, I'd be scared just to walk by it. Having to continue up on these broken stairs, how would you know whether or not it was hostile? I suppose that's what testing is for. Here we see another large, completely empty room with low lighting, although this one has objects in it, so it's not totally empty. We see what looks to be ceiling or floor tiles and some pieces of wood. On the left side of the image, there is a table with three chairs. This makes me wonder what they're here for. Perhaps it's for whoever is working here to sit? but it's in such an odd place. Like, is there a reason for it being here and not closer to the entrance or even the back wall? Also, there's a light turned on all the way in the back. It doesn't add much, but it makes me think that this image with less exposure would make for a better photo. This image appears to be of some type of restaurant or club. I can only assume as much with the interesting design choices. We see basic bar stools pushed in and around tables. However, the base of these tables are actually barrels. These barrels are not only utilized as tables, as some of them are actually lurking on stage in the dark. Like the last image, this image only has one light source. Unlike the other one, it actually provides light to the image, and without it, it would be shrouded in complete darkness. It's necessary in this case, just something to think about when working with lighting. Now here's an image with some actual substance. It's visually interesting, with the aisle leading up and onto the empty stage. The lighting is dim for the uncomfortable atmosphere, and there are plenty of confusing elements. 
like this white garment obstructed by what I assume is an accident of Phil Snare blocking the camera. Something else that catches my attention are these large green structures on stage. The reflection from Phil's flash illuminates the shiny texture on the left side, but not the right. I'm also unsure of what they're supposed to be. Assuming this is a high school, maybe it's some set pieces for a play, as they don't look like they're physically attached to the stage and are possibly movable. These next four images all suffer from the same issue, so rather than repeating myself, I decided just to group them together. Believe it or not, they're actually taken all by the same person, so maybe that has something to do with it. These images all lack a clear subject, have poor framing, and provide no other outstanding element of interest. Sure, we can call these liminal space images, but where's the value to them? What am I supposed to be looking at in this first image? Do I take significance from the cart? The exit door's cramped placement? The framing is unclear, and so is the image. Honestly, I'm more impressed by the design of these underlights, and even more impressed by the rest of the space, shown in the second image. The third one provides us with way too much information. We know, A, what this door leads to, and B, where this photo was taken. These things are passable, sure, but when there's nothing visually interesting going on, having information provided like this ruins the image. Lastly, in regards to framing, we have this image. I know what Entity was trying to go for here, having an effect similar to let's say that of the dream pools, where a space can appear infinite, but there are too many distractions. Like this discolored tile and the light reflections, where if you look hard enough, you can even see the rest of the room's shape. It's too grounded in reality and the mundane to properly get that liminal space feel. This image, taken on a phone, in a moving car, displays a freshly cut lawn with a suburban house against a cloudy blue sky. Don't you feel like you've seen this image before? Despite it being quick shotted in a car, the environment looks so dreamy. I would say this is due to all the natural colors. The bright green grass and the baby blue sky are earthy and calming. The house being this light and dark brown adds to that natural look, and it all comes together to make this fake looking yet very real image. I also want to point out how the clouds line up with the roof of the house. I, I don't understand how this image was taken so perfectly, I mean, it was taken in a moving car. I said it then, and I'll say it now. This photo is so good. So that's going to do it for this week's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to show your support below by doing all those things YouTube allows you to do. It's your given right having a YouTube account, you might as well take advantage of it. I appreciate all the support these videos get, and as you all know, I read every comment, so feel free to say something below. I hope to see you in the next one, and as always, thank you for watching, and take care.